Zoning Board of Appeals, please listen to the rules and procedures that will follow for tonight's meeting. Good evening and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Town of Babylon Zoning Board of Appeals. The following is the procedure that will be followed tonight. The matters will be called in the order they appear on the calendar, with adjourned matters being called at the end of the regularly scheduled matters. Matters cannot be heard prior to their published scheduled time. When your matter is called, please submit the affidavit of posting to the secretary and proceed to the podium and give your name and address. The chairperson will then swear you in and read into the record information we have from your application, comments from various town departments, and any correspondence received on your application. The chairperson will then ask you to make whatever presentation you wish to make to the board. After you have made your presentation, the board will ask whatever questions the board deems appropriate, and then we will ask for comments from the public. If you wish to speak for or against an application, we ask that you wait until you're acknowledged. Come forward, give us your name and address, tell us where your property is in relation to the property that's in question tonight, and then please direct your comments to the board, not the applicant or the applicant's representative. We have to keep a record, and we cannot do that if there are people talking over each other or cross conversations. If someone has spoken for or against an application, and they have said exactly the same thing that you wish to say, it will have the same force and effect in the record if you give your name and address, are sworn in, and say that you join in those comments. If you have anything additional to say, please don't hesitate to do so, but keep in mind that you will be given only one opportunity to speak. After the public has spoken, the board may ask the applicant to come back to answer any questions that may have come up as a result of the public comments, or for the applicant to summarize. When the applicant comes back to answer any additional questions, if that happens, that does not start a second round of public comments. Once the matter has been heard, various things may occur. The board may decide the application immediately. It may reserve decision. If the board reserves decision, that does not mean the matter is approved or denied. It just means that the board needs more time to decide, may want to go out and look at the site again, or might want to review the documents and testimony further before making a decision. In either event, the applicant will receive the board's decision in writing shortly after the board makes its decision. If the application is approved, that does not mean that you can then go ahead and start construction or whatever it is that you requested from the board. You will have to wait for the building permit to be obtained from the building department before your go ahead. On some occasions, the matter may be continued for another night. If it is continued, in most cases, it will be for the submission of documents, a new survey, new plans, or something of that nature. If that's the case, no one needs to come back on the new date. The documents will be submitted and no further testimony will be taken. On rare occasions, a matter may be continued for future testimony. If that's the case, then people would have to come back to testify. If matters are adjourned at an open meeting on the scheduled date of hearing, no further notice need be given unless specifically required by the board on the date the adjournment is granted. Three rules that may affect your ability to proceed tonight. One, if the sign was not posted for 10 days, we cannot hold the hearing tonight. Two, if you commence this proceeding while you own the property, but no longer own the property, and you are here now to continue with the application, you will need either the written consent of the new owner or the new owner to be present for the hearing. This situation could come about if you sold your house or building, money was held in escrow at closing for a certificate of occupancy or permit, and you're here tonight to clear that up. Lastly, if your application is a commercial application, and it's other than a renewal, and there is more than one tenant in the building, then you need your landlord to be here. Is there any applicant that has any difficulty with those situations and would need an adjournment tonight? Is there anyone that would need an adjournment? Please rise and join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 
First application is application 22177 of Porta Hicks, property located in Amityville. <coughs> Did you name an address for the record, please? Uh, Portia Hicks, 854 County Line Road, Amityville, New York, 11701. Okay, for the record, we have a planning division memo dated October 20th, 2022, biomental control memo dated October 25th, 2022. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. Survey by Michael K. Wicks dated May 18th, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map and... Chairman, we have four photographs. Okay, what would you like to tell us about the application? Um, I built a detached garage on the property. Okay, uh, turn the hearing over to Mr. Perotti. How you doing? Hi. You're here to uh, uh, legalize the garage, correct? Correct. How long have you owned the property? Uh, five years. Are you selling or? Selling. Are you selling? Yes. Okay. Um, have you read the planning memo? Yes. So if approved, do you agree that um, if the garage is ever taken down to be rebuilt in a conforming location? Correct. Okay. Yes. I have no further questions. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Good. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve application 22-177. So, second. All in favor? Good luck. Good luck. Oh, oh. With the condition if the garage is ever taken down to be rebuilt in a conformal location. Got it. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. You're good. Good luck. Next application is application 22175 of DLS Fine Homes, Inc., property located in North Babylon. Good evening. Name and address for the record. My name is Chris Alvino. I work for Harold Gebhardt Architect, 363 North Wellwood Avenue, Lindenhurst. Okay, ma'am. Name and address. Uh, Darlene Scalone, and it's 78 Whittier Avenue, North Babylon, New York, 11703. Okay, thank you. Do you both firm tell the truth? Yes. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated October 20th, 2022. Department of Environmental Control Memo dated October 25th, 2022. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. A survey by Michael K. Wicks dated May 11th, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map and... Chairman, there's 10 photographs. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can someone just send me the It's Darlene, D-A-R-L-E-N-E, -E, Spallone. S P A L L O N E. No problem. Well, Jake, tell us about the application. Okay, well, this site was a, a big, this was a nightmare site. It was in really disheveled uh, situation here. And uh, Darlene cleaned it all up. Basically, everything we're asking for was already there, just a lot nicer now because it's all been, um, you know, cleaned up, resided. Re landscaped. It's it's really beautiful. If anyone's drove by it, it's at a dead end. It's at a dead end street. Um, I did read the planning memo. Um, we'd like to keep the the driveway just the way it is. It's really pretty. It, there, it's still a very large side yard. There is a lot of green space on the property. And uh, we'd just like to have it approved. Okay. Thank you. Turn the hearing over to Mr. Shepard. All right, let, how about the shed? Let's start with that. Would you agree that you have ever, oh, oh, in the first place, what brings you here? You're selling it, I see? Well, selling I was doing work um, at the house, and I was not even aware. I bought it as a foreclosure home, and I was not aware until I was applying for permits for plumbing that there was issues with the house, um, that the shed was too close to the property line, or the overhang was not legal, um, I was not aware of any of this. This was all pre-existing to me buying it. Do you have an attorney? Yes, I did have an attorney. They, they said there was violations on the property, which was for a pool, um, semi-aground pool that didn't have a permit. I removed that. 
and the only other violation, violation that came up was there was two kitchens, which they came and fi there's no, there isn't two kitchens there, okay. and that was inspected. So no, I was not aware of any of this. Okay, okay. so if we would approve this, would you agree that if the shed ever needs to come down, would you put it in a conforming location? Definitely. Okay, now as far as the, <clears throat> the um, pavers, you're right up against the property line. You need to have something for runoff, you know, irrigation water it's, and snow. It's not, it's, not, it's not fair that your water just goes out into your neighbor's property or out into the street like that. So we need to do something. Do you want us to take a, a couple of feet? We could do two feet. That would be, that would be acceptable. Beautiful. <clears throat> I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions from the board? That, that is, but it's all new. Right, so it's been, it's been replaced tile with, paving. with paving, yes, it's the same shape with paving. I, I understand you mentioned that the vehicles would line up to park in this driveway? That's kind of how it's always been. For a long time, anyway. But I can tell you now, the site doesn't look anything like that. It's beautiful now. It's got a beautiful lawn in the back. It's landscaped very nicely. It's, it's totally different. It was well kept. I was there by there yesterday. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. You'd have to uh, okay. Or you could just put you could just say two feet of just taking two feet away. There is a little space. There is like a little edge of. I didn't see anything. I thought so. It was right up against the fence. Mm, I think there is a little a little green, but oh. we'll we'll do two feet. All right. We'll recal. We'll have it recalculated. Great. <coughs> All right. Um, any other questions from the board? Okay. I can revise the site plan, show that two foot, show the two foot. and then hand it, hand it back in. Yeah. No problem. Right in, okay. All right. Would anybody else like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. We're going to close the hearing and we're going to reserve decision. We're going to keep the record open for an update of the plan. I'll have that in on Tuesday. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I'll bring it to plan. Thank you, Rachel. Everyone have a great Halloween. You too. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, in consultation with the applicant and the, the contract that's going to be doing the installation of the pool, whether the planning comment or the environmental comment, there's no issue in, in terms of conformance. Well, the bottom line there, you believe you re agree to um, maintain the two-foot setback? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Same thing, yeah. So we're going to ask you to do the same thing. Is it? Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve application. 22, one, where is it, I don't see it. Oh my God, 22173, and I got my glasses on. <laughs> With the conditions that it stays the way it is on the uh, survey. survey. Understood. Second. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Next application is application 22176 of Frank Jin, property located in West Babylon. <clears throat> Name and address for the record. Uh, Kelly Bennett, 1257 Udall Road, Bayshore, New York, 11706. Okay, so do you affirm to tell the truth? Yes, I do. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated October 20th, 2022. Biomethyl control memo dated October 25th, 2022. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. A survey by Matthew Allen Burst dated February 17th, 2019. Tax map acting as an area map. And Chairman, we have four photographs on the site plan by Richard. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> Moose? Mish. Mish. All right. Uh, dated January 20, 2022. Okay. What would you like to tell us about the application? I'm here tonight on behalf of uh, Mr. Ging as well as the architect. We have three uh, variance requests that we're seeking relief for. Um, this is all in connection with a proposed two-story uh, rear addition. It's about 20 by 20. So on the first floor, they're gaining a really gorgeous great room and doing a master suite above. So it's just a very... Uh, you know, tiny house, they're looking to get that extra space for themselves. Uh, so we are seeking, pr and a portico. So we're seeking to diminish the front yard setback uh, from the required 30 feet to 25.5 uh, for the porch. Um, I know you guys have the Google map up so you can kind of see. I also had some photos, but the average uh, front yard setback on that side of the street is about 21.6. Uh, so it's really in conformance and character and less of a request than some of the other dwellings that have been approved. Uh, there are two rear decks right now that will be removed for the construction, and the second deck would be demolished. And the 5.6 uh, side yard setback is an existing setback that we're following. And then the rear yard setback, the request is from 30 feet to 26 feet. Turn it here over to Ms. McCullough. All right, so we're just going for more space, no rental. Yeah, I don't know if you, um, I have an extra copy of the floor plan yep, if have you it. want it. We have it. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward yep. for a great room downstairs and master upstairs. Perfect. And you agree to not um, enclose the front porch? Absolutely. All right, I have no further questions. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Make a motion to approve application 22-176 with the condition that the front porch not be further enclosed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next application is application 22-178 of Village Line Auto, property located in Amityville. Right? 
Yeah. It's actually me again. <laughs> Just getting ready. Okay. They all moved up and made me nervous. I wasn't sure what was going on. I'm being scared. Sorry for the confusion. It is Halloween. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> okay. Uh, <laughs> I should have stayed up. I didn't name, know that. Name an address for the record, please. Uh, Kelly Bennett, 1257 Udall Road, Bayshore, New York, 11706. Okay, and you were firm to tell the truth? Yes, I do. For the record, we have a planning division on memo dated October 24th, 2022. Biomental control memo dated October 25th, 2022. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. Uh, Fire marshal's report dated October 27th, 2022. No violations. Suffolk County Planning Memo, dated October 19th, 2022. Decision of local determination. Take no position for or against. A survey by JM, JM Design Services, uh, dated August 8th, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map. And that should be probably the previous plot plan. I guess this Perhaps. Is yeah, that's, I guess this is a plot plan, not a survey. Yeah, it's a plot plan, I'm sorry. Um, I do have a copy of the survey if you want me to submit that. Um, we don't have it. Do we have it in the record? Or? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the date of the survey, so this was prepared by Frank Barliski, Land Surveying, uh, Riverhead, New York, 11901. Mm -hmm and it was prepared July 23rd of 2015. Okay, thank you. We have nine photographs, Mr. Chairman. What would you like to tell us about the application? Uh, for this one, we are basically here for a renewal for a public garage. It's been operating this way since uh, 2016. Our last grant and most recent approval was uh, for three years. It was case number 19-129. Um, the site's really well kept, no open complaints as far as um, I know. So they're really just seeking their standard uh, renewal on this property. I know they did have their fire marshal inspection. I don't know if that report has come back yet. Um, but that's really what we're here for this evening, is just seeking the, the yeah. renewal as, as the same. Uh, fire marshal error right into the out. It's no violation. So. Oh, great. <coughs> okay, I'll turn this over to Mr. Perotti. Um, is everything still the same as it was before? Everything is the same as before, and just to kind of touch on some of the planning um, comments, there, there is much sometimes overcrowding of vehicles. He is a growing body shop, so there is the, you know, the knowledge there that he may have to, um, you know, kind of factor for that. So at some, some points in the day on Reed Avenue, you know, it, it I there is there. an overflow. Yeah, I was there earlier on Reed. You know, there's yeah, almost like it's seven not cars the on most, that street. Um, you know, ideal. I we've tried to look at the site to see where we could get him perhaps some additional spots on the site, um, but with the calculations, it you know we can't really get him too much on-site additional parking. So we try so to work a way out that he's not going to have all these vehicles on his properties. Yes. As far as clients, I mean, yes. he should know how many. And it's gotten Areas. much better, you know, since 16, but we still need a... It has, but it was, but there was a lot of cars. Yes. There. And it's from the owner's, uh, tenant's perspective, he owns the building and the business. Um, you know, I, I guess everybody kind of points the finger at everybody else, but there's the Nissan dealership, Nissan service center, and then the big distributor at the end of Reed. So it's... Combine it doesn't make for a good situation at that. I mean, do on you agree to, to speak to him to he has to try to? I fix already the situation? have several times, and he's completely um, well aware of that. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, the wrong one. Um, so. He's well aware of it, but it's been going on for a yes. while. So we need some kind of game plan, yeah. I would think, to alleviate it. And I don't, you know, I, I kind of prepped him for being that this is an issue. I know we had gotten the three years um, in the past, and we'd be open to a condition on, you know, the renewal time frame itself until perhaps these items, you know, are addressed. Um, but three years was the last grant, and I, you know, that's why we're not seeking an uh, additional uh, term on that renewal. We kind of had the max already. 
Um, yeah. Shorter. That's yeah. and I'd be more than we'd be more than willing um, for that. As I said, I discussed okay. that. So let me. Yes. Yeah. That's. Um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve application 22-178 for a period of one year with the condition that the parking be taken <coughs> care of. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. He's got a year to straighten it out. <coughs> Try and get it done quicker. Thanks. I believe I'm the next one as You're well. the next one too? <laughs> On a roll tonight, aren't you? <laughs> Next application is application 22179 of American Racing Headers, properly located in Deer Park. Yes. Uh, Kelly Bennett, 1257 Udall Road, Bayshore, New York, 11706. Okay. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated October 20th, 2022, environmental control memo dated October 25th, 2022. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. Uh, fire Marshal's report dated October 27, 2022, has a valid permit. Survey by Lisa McQuilkin dated March 19, 2013, tax map acting as an area map. And Chairman, there's 10 photographs. Okay. What would you like to tell us about the application? Uh, uh, once again, this is a renewal for public garage. Uh, special exception uh, to operate as a public garage in order repair. Um, the diminishment of off-street parking from the required 46 to 32 is something that has been in place and you know, no needs or conditions at the site have changed. They do not have a parking issue at this location. Um, there, Different problem. There is an issue with some open container permits and this has seemed to uh, follow this property each renewal. So there are s currently six uh, trailers. I did take extra photos today. I can submit to the board. The building owner has uh, six trailers uh, on the property. The tenant, which is American Racing Headers, has three. They're permitted, however, expired. Um, my tenant, which is American Racing Headers, theirs expired in uh, 21. I have an application number on both. So I did speak with the building department today in order to address the um, building owner. There was a second notice sent out to him, you know, today regarding his uh, renewal on his containers. Um, but the client is responsible for three. One is. Um, it's a show trailer, so when they're actually bringing a vehicle or it's finished or it's going to a race, so that uh, trailer, the third one, is actually at a race right now, so sometimes it leaves the um, premises to transport the cars. They have one that is stationary with uh, stainless steel, um, you know, for their headers, and they make cars go faster. It's actually a lot of fun if you go down there. And then they have a third trailer uh, that has a hitch on it, and that's for cardboard storage. So um, these were things that are addressed, but they are expired, and they know uh, that they need to renew. And he had permits for the, the three that he has or not? My Seems client, to me we talked about this the last time. It, every time. I went back to my prior approvals from 18. It's, it's come up each time. Usually it was the property owner and then the tenant. When they got their trailers, we did apply for those three. So um, application number uh, 125880 is the uh, permit number for American Racing Headers, their three trailers, three trailers. that are expired. Um, so I'll be down, you know, with a check tomorrow Monday to renew them. However, you know, with the landlord, as I said, the second notice was sent out to him today. So with that being said, you are taking trailers more carefully. Yes. Yeah, it's both parties. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can I submit um, photos sure. to you guys? So this was taken. So the six uh, trailers.
I do not believe so. I, um, as far as I've ever, you know, been in there, it's American Racing Headers that occupies that building. Yes. On the okay. And really have this is why I think it's been kind of an issue back and forth for American Racing Headers when they've gone for each renewal. And also, just for the record, uh, so Grand All Star is the building property owner. So the application number for his six containers and trailers is application number, or permit number rather, 126811. Those are the six that belong They're to all the property. Expired. All expired. His ex his were renewed, 19 and 20. Uh, however, they expired May 24th of 2022. The six that belong to the property owner. All right. Um, I think we'll do the same with this one. We'll approve it for one year. Sounds great. Uh, and uh, does anybody want to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve application 22179 for a period of one year, uh, and you know what you have to do. Yes, with the trailers and stuff. certainly. Okay? Exactly. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Or removed. Perfect. All yeah, right. removed is fine. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for your time tonight. Okay, no problem. Next application is application 22180 of South Hubbard's Commons, LLC, property located in West Babylon. Good evening. Uh, Philip. Philip Butler, Farrell Fritz, <laughs> representing the applicant. Okay. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated October 20th, 2022. Biomental control memo dated October 26, 2022. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. A Suffolk County planning memo dated October 19th, 2022. Decision of local determination. Take no position for or against. We have a survey by James Weed dated October 23rd, 2014. We have a site plan by Joseph Deal dated uh, August 18th, 2022. Uh, we have a tax map acting as an area map. We have another tax map aerial view uh, as a tax map and I mean, we have four photographs. Would you like to tell us about the application? I have some additional materials that I would like to submit for the record. Sure. They're largely duplicative of what you just listed, but I'll hand them okay. up. Okay. Well, uh, so again, Philip Butler with the law firm of Farrell Fritz representing the applicant. I am joined here tonight by Jack Ventimiglia, who represents the, um, the property owner developer. Uh, Mike Bian Kenyello of Bowler Engineering and Ethan Shukoski, who is with uh, Atlantic uh, Traffic and Design, the traffic consultant on this project. So, just as a, um, uh, I guess, a reminder for the board, this project was effectively before you back in 2018 for a front yard setback variance. Um, the proposed uh, commercial building is substantially identical to what was previously approved. Um, it is roughly an 11,000 square foot for tenant commercial building with 113 proposed parking stalls. Um, originally, it was going to be uh, a tenant mix of two restaurants and two retail uses. The reason we're before you tonight is because one of the proposed retail spaces is actually going to be occupied by a medical office use, which is a physical therapist. It is a permitted use in the district. Um, the only changes to the site plan, which have already been approved by your planning board, um, are the addition of some additional uh, ADA-compliant parking stalls and also um, some more sidewalk ramps to uh, service those additional ADA parking stalls. Um, touching briefly on the five points this board is required to consider, um, we submit that there is no environmental impact associated with this variance, which has been confirmed by your Department of Environmental Control and the Type 2 um, a declaration. Um, there is no impact on community character. 
in fact the proposed parking layout preserves community character in the sense that the configuration will uh, preserve a very large um, natural vegetated buffer towards the rear of the site that adjoins some residences. So if we were to increase the number of parking stalls by getting rid of that buffer, it would negatively impact those residents, and I'm sure nobody wants that. Um, substantiality, uh, the variance is six stalls, uh, 119 required, 113 proposed. This is roughly 5%, which I submit is a de minimis variance. Uh, there are no alternatives that are feasible for the applicant. This is, quite frankly, the best potential tenant for this space. It is a complementary, as opposed to a um, competing tenant, whereas you'd have two retails, now you have a medical office and a retail. Um, so the parking ratios are, frankly, they are what they are, so we're, we're bound by them, of course. Um, and I would submit that the, uh, the need for the variance is also not self-created for the uh, same reason. Um, so uh, obviously the, the major concern here would be that the proposed on-site parking is adequate for all four tenants and will not overburden the site. Um, you have before you a traffic memo that I believe is exhibit six in the materials that I provided to you. Um, I'll skip to the end. Yep. Right, it w I believe it was submitted earlier this month. Um, but. Um, Skipping to the end, basically at uh, peak demand, um, we'll only need about 67 uh, parking stalls estimated, which would leave a, a buffer of about 41% uh, or 46 stalls. My math is probably off. But there's a very large margin between what is expected to be needed at peak times and what is to be provided. Uh, to the extent the board would like to hear directly from Mr. Shukowski, he is here and can speak to the, uh, the memo that was prepared by his firm. Uh, otherwise, we're um, happy to answer any questions from the board. Hearing over to Ms. McCullough. Okay, so I agree most likely a physical therapist's office would obviously attract way less traffic than a retailer. However, um, do we have do we have any knowledge of how this is going to be held? Will there be any um, group therapy? Most likely no. Well, they actually do have the tenants. So um, Jack, can you speak to that? Yeah. Okay, uh, this is Jack Ventimiglia. He represents the, um, the property owner. So the question was whether there'll be group therapy sessions. Jack Ventimiglia, uh, address is 50191 Harding Street, Canton, Michigan, 48188. Uh, the physical use therapy is not a group yeah. therapy use. It's for individual clients seeking therapy for injury. Appointment only? Most? Yeah, appointment only based. Oh, okay. Okay. Hours? Um, hours, I don't have them on hand, but I could provide those if needed. Okay. Thank you. I believe they were presented in the planning packet when we had them, so. Okay. Do we know how many therapists will be present? Mm, I don't have that information at this time. Okay. Thank but you. If needed, we can provide. Absolutely. All right, so you gave a number around uh, peak hours. What, where are we getting that information from? Uh, that's derived from the parking analysis that was prepared by Atlantic Traffic and Design, which, um, again, is, is in your materials, so that, that's where the data comes from. But if we don't have the hours of operation, how will we have what are peak hours with? I'll, I'll let... Ethan, speak to that since I'm not the engineer. Thank you. Sure. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. Uh, Ethan Chikoski, it's S C H U K O S K E. I, I think I missed the sign in earlier. Um, I'm with Atlantic Traffic and Design Engineering, we're the traffic engineers for the project. You um, tell the truth? Yes, I do. Uh, I missed the last guy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an attorney. Um, so, for, for in this case, uh, we, we use two um, methods of, of evaluating the parking generation for the uh, medical use. We, one is the Institute of Transportation Engineers uh, publishes what's called the Parking Generation Manual, and they um, encompass studies throughout the country, and okay. they aggregate that data. And with that comes average uh, peak periods of demand for all types of uses, including medical offices. So that's where we derive that. Uh, in this case, we also studied two physical therapist offices okay. on Long Island to give some kind of local data, and uh, we actually ended up using that because it was a slightly higher parking rate 
than the ITE data. So uh, that's where we derive the numbers from is, is mostly ITE, but then we also looked at some local sources. Got it. Thank you. That's what I was wondering. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Uh, any other questions you have? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, you know, it, it was just the locations we were trying to find were, 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 we're trying to get similar size locations and then also locations that weren't in shared plazas so we could understand the exact parking demand as opposed to in a shared yeah. plaza. It's kind of harder and, and, you know, you can yeah. do surveys and things like that, but, um. That's what we found from ITE. You know, that, that gives you hourly breakdowns of when you can see that peak demand. So that kind of made sense to me. It's sort of after work, you know, they, they get a, a little more appointments, I, I suppose, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And just to answer the question, since it's been answered, um, uh, we, uh, the hours of operation would be uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, Saturday would be 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then closed on Sunday. Okay. And the maximum number of employees would be six. Perfect. So again, the close time, 7 a.m. to 8 2 p.m. Right, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. How about interior room? How many rooms, how many places are we gonna be doing therapy? Um, how many, like, patient rooms? Yeah. Um, I think I have a floor plan in here. Do you know offhand, Jeff? I believe it's an open layout. Was that off mute? Well done, but you're still. I'll have to take a look at the plan again, but I believe it was set up as an open layout where they have therapy tables oh, okay. as opposed to enclosed rooms. Got it. So is it safe to assume six therapists, six people? Six people waiting. <coughs> you could have you could have that, but again, it's by appointment, so depending on the timing of appointments. Thank you. So I think under your code, the maximum number of, of anticipated <coughs> spaces would be thirty, um, which I think sounds probably high considering the use. Yeah. And obviously, the, I, I actually discussed that with Jack early today. There's no objection to that at all, since they already agreed to it, especially with the planning board. So we assume that would carry through. All right. I have no further questions. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. All right. I make a motion to approve application number 22 180 with the condition that um, the Rear parking utilized by employees. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It did a little bit, you're right. I was gonna say you're approved, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Seven thirteen Sunrise Highway. West Babylon. So we should have some other housekeeping business? 
No, I'm just writing, filling out the. I got it right here. I'm done. Take care. Good night. Ham comes around front. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right next right, to right it. <laughs> I make a, a motion to approve application 22, I'm not approve. <laughs> I make a motion to for extension of time for application 21-153 for a period of one year. Second. Is it six? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I make a motion for a second extension for application 21-154 for a period of six months. Second. Correspondence on that that, that uh, what Bazell withdrew was the. Mm. Well, the, the problem was the height, obviously. So I guess we're expecting, you know, maybe some of the height or.
that the guy with the commercial place? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. So we're down the end of uh, Westside Concourse and Concourse Park. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to call him right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting that Joe got out of the place that day. Yeah, you know, and I feel bad because there was two weeks of snowing on the sidewalk. Yeah. And it was like, like, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> 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 no, that's that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yes, and there was one other one that I can't remember I wasn't here, so I don't know. I did. I did. Municipal parking, that's not the one, because I, I was in the school, but I was going to be the Bonham Parkway parking that they were going to do. The train station the parking. Railroad, right. The railroad, yeah. yeah. So it would be two permits that we'll be getting, and these two parking spots? Now, what do they do? Do they pay for these, like, on a yearly basis or yeah. something? Is it on a first come first serve basis? Because wh how? What if these people get shut out, like year two, three, or four?
offer guests and to make sure for you to have a comfortable space to right. some degree. Right. 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 I've had a lot of talking over there. I got to tell you, like even the, on the under the railroad, like going to the west and stuff over there, it's it's always nice. And we we just went to that class on Monday, and the, one of the attorneys up there said that like up and down the whole of the South Shore uh, line, none of the railroad parking spaces or parking lots are full right now. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure yeah. the day will come. Well, definitely, when, man. I, because I go to work uh, along Sun Lakes every day to Mount. Always near to that, so yeah. So, like ten years ago, we were in a uh, group of students voted where the border is between Georgia on the left, and the two were on the right of each other. But um, you know, we can't really do that now. It's very expensive to buy for the school building and the space and stuff, and it's like six dollars to go to the school. Oh. That where they do the Christmas tree lighting? Yeah. That corner? Staying is in good shape, you know. <laughs> Depends on the time of the year and the weather. We are, you know? we are hard. <coughs> yeah, it's snowing in January. It's a long walk. Yeah. yeah. It is. That one's a lot better. <laughs> so, what else did you guys have? Anything else that you were concerned about? Guys okay? I guess there was a bunch of neighbors that were maybe yeah, they were all upset about the traffic and that's gonna be so congested. That's what the people were worried for a lot. It's always congested. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know those are studio apartments. What do you do in a situation where somebody moves in and now there's two people? They they can't do anything, right? Well, I think there there are some studio apartments that are that are one for <laughs> I will make a motion to a Oh, all right. Uh, where is, what do I, where's the building like? Uh, like to make a motion on application. 23160. 23160 to adopt negative. Second. <laughs> no, I can't. First. 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 I guess I could. Second. I second. Second. Yeah, I'm out. So you made the motion. Second. Yep. Second. Approved it. Aye. 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 Oh, all right. <laughs> I will make a motion to approve application 22 160. H building to the tax. That's about it, right? I don't have nothing else. No, so uh, who did the, the planning department put that condition on their approval, Rachel, for the parking permit? We did. Okay. I was talking to the planning department that the uh, applicant was going to go through the 
with the condition that the owner of the property maintain 13 parking stickers. Second. Aye. That's all he had, though. It was two of them back to back. Same houses. Same, same uh, presented. Same. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Same guy representing. Both. Same guy representing them. Yeah. I remember this one, that's why I'm, I'm asking because. Oh, was we heard again on the 20th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we were asking him why doesn't he use the garage? He was saying he needed for the kids, yeah, mud room, and he wanted space for the kids to come in and drop their things there. We take that door instead of going through the garage right. and going through a door. You could put a side door on the garage, go yes. through the garage, and into the mud room. But he didn't want to do that. That was an inconvenience. He said he had multiple cars. It was a lot of expense. This doesn't seem like it's that big a deal. I mean, just, you know. Because he has options. Right. There you go. Yeah, so, uh, what, what are we got here? So this is me. Okay, so it's Bobby guess. So I heard this the first time around, so. Um, I will make a motion on application 22131 to approve uh, variances number one and two and to deny and refer to council on variance number three for the two front doors. Second. All in favor? Aye. I knew there was a door there from the first time I went. And then he said it wasn't, it's a window, blah, blah. So you really can't see it because there's some like some shrubbage there blocking it, but there's a door there. So he has a front door and then on the porch, he has another door that kind of goes into the garage already. So I don't know what he's doing. 
right. did you ask him that I too? asked him that and he yeah. said no. And I'm like, he's like, it's a window. I'm like, it's a window? He's like, yeah, it's a window. So I took a video, it's a door. Um, <laughs> I am because I'm. I drove back and forth because it can <coughs> look like you a window. It was that night. So that, it's a door for sure. A side front door. No, I. I don't know if he's taking that out or what. See, look at this. This is a door here. See the knob? That's yeah. a door. But it looks like a window. Pass it, guys. You guys got to see it because I can't believe he lied like that. Um, so, I. Well, yeah. At least not as. Maybe it's a front. Right, but my suggestion would be okay, so make the room that you are proposing smaller and then make this door on the side instead of trying to fit a side door on the already. Yeah, it, right. it's the same. And it's the same, same, same scenario. Same so let's do the same, let's do the same thing. It goes to the library. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That it's a window, yeah, not a window. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so. Okay, all right. So, does anything else have to do with that? All right, so I make a motion to approve application number 22131, variances one, two, three, and four and deny variance number five. Second. Roll save it. Aye. 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 Refer, Refer to council. Yes. Make a motion to accept the minutes of October 13th, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. 